Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're here with... New Adventure. I mean, obviously you guys know what it is, because you can read the title of the episode. Um, we're here with Atlantic Fleet, and I know I said I was going to cover... Well, okay, before we even get into the episode, let's just talk about one thing. We're going to go into the options menu, and we are going to go take a look at the default controls, because um, the dev team, after I released my... Uh, review video. The dev team got in contact with me and uh, let me know that there was, or there is, and uh, there still is, a uh, beta option on Steam that adds a whole host of new uh, keyboard commands, including <clears throat> this elevation 0.1 degree change, so the number pad 7 and 9, or O and P. Oh my god, thank you guys. That is huge it's it's perfectly what this this game needed when it comes to the fine the fine touch aiming so thank you guys very much for doing that um that that, that makes me for the first time in my life i feel like a catered to celebrity so thank you guys very much that feels nice <laughs> um totally tongue-in-cheek by the way uh okay so anyway uh let's talk about what we're gonna do for the Battle of the Atlantic. And I know I said I wanted to do a Royal Navy uh, game, and I do, and, and I will. Um, there's just one little issue with Royal Navy, and that's the sub hunting. And I've gotta figure out, basically, I get my style down and my challenge down, my style and my challenge. Neither of those words were actually the ones I was looking for. I'm not even fucking timing this thing. Let's, let's get this on, so at least I've got a vague idea how long this episode's gonna be. Um, I just, I, uh, it's the sub hunting, and I don't have a good tactic for it yet, which uh, actually led to this idea uh, that I'm doing now for this series. That's <laughs> Donuts' wet dream. Mmm, lovely. <laughs> Uh, so there is there is going to be a Royal Navy campaign coming. Um, I just I need to get better at how to surface ship, and then so the idea for this uh, came. I was I was playing around with the United Kingdom, and uh, there's no question the surface ships of the Royal Navy beat the the Kriegsmarine hands down. Um, the real advantage of the Kriegsmarine, of course, is their Unterseeboot fleet, right? And um, that got me that got me wondering, because in history, if you take a look at it, uh, but, you know, th there was a certain group in the Kriegsmarine who were like, you know what, let's not even bother with the surface fleet at all. Let's have 100% U-boats. And, you know, understandably, there were people who were like, mm, that might not be a good idea. Um... Because that, I mean, that is such a huge, different change, and it's the shift, right? And it's it's a massive one to go from big ass surface ships and like battleships, right? Like this is this is the end of the age of battleships. Uh, to go from that to little dinky undersea boats, I don't know, man. That seems like a strategy that's doomed to fail. Uh, well, let's find out, shall we? So, how we're gonna do it, we need to purchase our own starting ships, which is a great little addition to this campaign. And, um, it gives it slightly more depth than I think s somebody would be expecting otherwise. Um, the whole grand campaign, as it is, I mean, let's just give this a start. Yes, it's gonna undo one of the greatest campaigns I've ever played, but that's fine. We can we can do that. So, uh, the Royal Navy, or the, the Kriegsmarine, starting off with nothing, 280,000 renown. That's about it. Um, so, you know, we're going to skip through all of these ships that looks like they'd be fun to have. Um, and now we could either go with the Type 7, right, which has one three and a half inch shell, 17.7 .7 knots max speed, um, it can carry 200 shells and 14 torpedoes, or we'll go with the, uh, the Type 9, which is slightly faster. I need to move that, because I can't really see, damn you fraps indicators, um, more shells and more torpedoes. So, 
Ooh, less shells, but far more torpedoes. That's fine. We'll go with the faster ship uh, with the bigger gun. So we're going to need 30 of these. And this is just this is just the, the spot where it gets, you know, the worst for, for the interface. Because you just got to do this 30 times. It would be nice if there was a way to uh, purchase more than one ship. I've noticed the same thing with... Um, the Royal Navy when I'm purchasing destroyers to start with because it's like all right thinking about this we can have a maximum of 30 ships I'm gonna do a third of my ships as destroyers seems like a good idea so then you know you're just doing you're doing this 10 times or in this case 30 times um, I mean that is that is a minor niggle if ever there was one uh, almost there 28 29 30. All right, we can build no more ships. <clears throat> Here's all our ships. Let's get out there. All right, so let's explain this view uh, for those who would be unfamiliar. Of course, I'm still learning things as they come. I, have, I would not say I've got an expert grasp on this game or anything of that nature. And... Um, you know, just taking a look at it, this campaign mode just seems like a little nice, nice little extra. I think... As I've played through, my the longest running campaign got me into um, September of 1940, I think. Uh, the game progressed as one would expect, and Norway and France fell, which then gave you uh, ports to use, which is important. Um, but let's take a look, before we get into that, at the map. So it's just a nice little map of the Atlantic. Uh, there's not really too much going on, and obviously the focus is going to be in the north. We can take a look, and we've got um, names of each grid, and what would appear to be uh, guesses, or I don't know if guesses is the right word, but just like just 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 potential locations. There we go. That seems doable of um, the enemy fleet. Uh, if we go over here, now this screen here looks pretty empty. Remember, it's the first week of September, so once the war starts, this screen becomes a bit more important. Here we got weather, which um, could or could not play into things for you, considering we're rolling with none but U-boats. Um, yeah, I don't think the weather is going to be too much of a concern for us. So speaking of, uh, how are we going to roll out with this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, and what I would like to do, scrolling through here, actually, you know what, we'll go over this now, um, just because. Let's take a look at U-103. We've got uh, all of the subsystems, so propulsion, steering pumps, sonar, deck gun, forward, aft, pressure hull, and triple A. We've got U-103, the Type 9 class submarine, We've got an experience bar, which I had no idea these things gained experience. That is really cool. I would imagine, uh, <clears throat> I haven't put it too much into, into uh, test, but I would imagine the increase in um, experience like makes the suggestions more accurate. So like, hey, that ship is 20.3 elevation away would be more accurate, and your torpedo gauges would be more accurate. I think? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but it's still neat that it's there. Uh, so there's the tonnage, the max, and the shells. So four-inch shells and torpedoes. This comes very important to keep your eye on. And there's not really a good way to keep your eye on it other than just, like, scrolling through the boats and finding it. So always keep your eye on that. Anyway, we're going to take, what, five U-boats and right away plop them down in England. And they're going to be responsible for, um, you know, basically attacking any English shipping that's going on in Great Britain itself or anything. That's that's the main focus there. Now remember, we start a peace. We start a peace with these people. Um, what else? Well, we're going to want to leave... Um, I'm going to say for now... One, two, three, four, five. Five units in Germany. For now, that should be good. Okay. 
So we've got a nice little reserve fleet of five U-boats. We'll have another fleet of five U-boats blocking England, and then that'll give us 20 U-boats out here to set up our blockade of the rest. So let's just go next turn. A submarine attacked by enemy aircraft already. That seems like an odd time. Uh, well, let's send you home already. One, two, three, four, five. So everybody else down here can just get selected and moved on. Okay, so we'll get you into position there. Now let me just see. The freighters are up. So, <clears throat> here's the path that the freighters are taking. We're going to want to make sure to keep U-boats um, everywhere there. So, what we're going to need to do then is just spread the fleet out. And I'm going to keep <clears throat> more U-boats closer to England than over here. You'll see what I mean uh, once, we, once we get ourselves set up. We'll take a little bit of time to do so. But that's okay. Now, uh, we've got you there. So let's hit our shipyard and take the U-128 and get it in three weeks of repair. My god, it would be better to just scrap it and buy a new one. Not really. Uh, or, or maybe, I don't know. I'm just going with the repair route because that seems to make more sense. Um... Right, so here we'll probably... Oh no, we've already moved that turn. So those guys are fine, those guys are fine, those guys are fine. Good, okay, we'll go next turn. Not much has changed. But we can see um, the, the transport routes are getting thicker. We got stuff coming in from Africa. We got stuff going across like this. Um, so, let's... Let's see, we're going to need three U-boats there. We're going to want to keep two here and then move the rest down like so. Right? And then we'll get some in there, some in there. We might put some down there. Certainly some maybe there. We already got some there. Perfect. So that's basically what you want to do is just... Um, four and four, that seems ridiculous. We gotta have some more. Yeah, we will. Okay. We'll figure this out. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought there. Basically, you just wanna kinda get this all sorted out, like so. Let's see, so that's covered. I guess it would be just some down there into Dakar. Um, what do we got, two? Yeah, so we could do two. One there, one there, there we go. We'll just have to keep an eye on this to make sure that, you know, if as there's changes, we adjust the fleet to, um, looks like we're doing good, so we'll send one more out, and then we can take one of these guys and send them out, and then we can take one of these guys and send them down. And I think we're going to want to set up there, so we'll send another one there. And then we could send one of these guys. Now they've already moved. But we could send... Yeah, we'll figure this out. Um, like so, and then three all the way down there. That seems like too many. Let's send one more back up there. And then these down here, and one more in there. <clears throat> and that should have basically the entire Navy, or the entire Royal Navy, blockaded nicely. Um, and then, what do you do at this point? You kind of just sit back and wait. Um, you don't always engage. What I'm going to do is send him up there threes in the center where there's going to be theoretically more activity, twos along the edge. That is just fine. And so so basically the, the thinking is, um, obviously here's where the transport's coming through, 
And we got some over there. We're not going to worry about that guy over there. We got a pretty good stranglehold on the system here. Um, and so you're not always going to be running into enemies, uh, mainly because the ocean's big. And if you think about it, like, if you take a look at how big of an area this covers, and I've got three U-boats covering it, there's going to be, you know, times convoys get through. But anyway, we got our first convoy right here. So we've got a cruiser and a bunch of freighters. This is going to be sweet because the cruiser really has no way to come um, to fight back at us. There are, I mean, there are a few options. Ships can shoot at you with the deck gun and it can do damage to the point of sinking your U-boat. Um, but really, if you let yourself stay on the surface uh, well, somebody's beating you up, with a deck gun, and like you, your sub will take damage, so you'll notice you can't turn or, or things of that nature, and you stay on the surface, then you deserve you deserve to get shot and die. Let's take a look at the map, what's going on. So we zoom out, we can see the direction our convoys are going, and the red are obviously us. Um, so here we got U-37 way in the back, U-38 and 39, kind of up close, uh, closer to the action. So let's see what would be the best thing for this guy to do I think a slight turn to starboard we'll get a nice little move on so they're lined up that away and then if we want to load up our torpedoes we have four each torpedo tube takes three turns to rearm or to reload there that's the word we're looking for so uh obviously it's gonna take a while to reload all four of your tubes if you're ever in a situation where, uh, you, you know, you're facing down destroyers or something, you might want to keep one, uh, one tube safe, um, because one of the neat things with torpedoes, and it's something that I, I hope I'll be able to show off here, um, I know I'll be able to show off unless all three of these ships aren't able to fire torpedoes. Uh, let's see, it might be best to do these th three ships here. So... First off, you. Um, we can see that our torpedo needs to... It's suggesting an angle of 342.8. So let's go and find 342.8. And let me just see... Oh! I was hoping that the keys would... Um, the fine-tuning keys would also work for torpedoes. That is too bad that they don't. 342.8. So we'll lock in a torpedo there. Uh, then the next guy is going to be this guy. You're telling me 357.1. Out of range! So that is your torpedo range. You want to keep that in mind, and it's especially with somebody like that, um, you've got to wonder, is that torpedo actually going to hit, or is it going to run out of range uh, in, in the future? Is it going to run out of range without hitting it? So, oh, come on. 8.3, 7.7, 7. 8.6. Just a nudge, just a nudge. 8.3, there we go. We'll lock that in. We got two torpedoes going to be loosen out of here. Let's do it. And so they move. Uh, obviously, it's a roughly around, I think, like three and a half kilometers maybe four um we are so this guy will definitely focus in on the york leaving this guy to take out some more freighters that way okay so you're already facing this direction let's move forward and do we have you don't have any torpedoes loaded is that just because okay good because you were pointed at something that you couldn't get a shot at whew Okay, so um, this is a bigger ship, and this is obviously a ship that we want to sink. A York-class cruiser is going to be uh, pretty renownful for um, for us. And the currency of the game, and this is another thing that I'm struggling with <clears throat> as the United Kingdom, uh, far less so than I am as as a, a U-boat submarine commander, is the currency, uh, the way you get more sh more currency is to sink ships. And um, 
it's very easy as a fleet of U-boats to sink a bunch of ships. It's very, it's slightly more difficult as the Royal Navy to accumulate enough renown to be able to replace losses and continue fighting. <clears throat> that could just be me not really understanding or knowing how to play this game, and I fully admit that that is entirely a uh, possibility. Speaking of, let's keep playing this game and actually get a nice little torpedo spread set up here. Um, I think we should be okay with three. Three torpedoes should hit. It's not like, you know, we're saving our, our uh, torpedoes for anything at the moment. Um... And we don't like we don't have any destroyers to worry about, so our our submarines are not under threat at all. So anyway, like I say, the way you earn uh, currency in the game is by sinking enemy ships, and that is that is one of the things I'm finding rather difficult as the Royal Navy is, is sinking enough ships so that I can replace the losses, especially when it comes to sub hunting. Mm. This whole torpedoes traveling, uh, 349.8, 349.7, close enough, uh, so that's that guy, we might as well try for this guy, uh, 334, point two. No, not even close. That should be okay. And then what else? We'll see if we can hit this guy. Uh, 2.7. 2.6. Good enough. Fire. Um... That is one one thing with these torpedoes that uh, fire before you can avoid them. <clears throat> Many a Royal Navy tribal class destroyer has been uh, absolutely destroyed by single submarines. Uh, and I'm not saying, it's, believe me, as a player of Silent Hunter who thoroughly enjoyed <clears throat> sinking everything with torpedoes, um, I'm not saying that it's... Uh, let's see, I wouldn't mind oh, what to do. Do we continue push it on? Well, I guess you got a ship behind you. And taking a look at this, that torpedo spread. Mm, I hope that one hits. I mean, three torpedoes is still probably going to be enough to, uh, to sink that. So that means we've got... No more torpedoes. Let's turn this way, because I got a cutting plan. Uh, next. And you, sir, you can just keep moving. And next. So now, oh yes, those move. And we can see that cruiser is probably dead. We also hit a freighter. But, I mean, critically, that's what we want to check out. Oh, yeah, so we can see the tiny little torpedo entrances. We got, <clears throat> so far, just one freighter. Or maybe two? We got two freighters. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, let's go here. So, I mean, now, you know, escort done. How many of these things are going to be Q-ships? At this stage, I'm not really sure, but let's get on the surface. And um, load up our high explosives. And what do we got? 12.9? Let's get this close to it. So, uh, <coughs> let's also use those keys. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Fire. Beautiful. Uh, you, you're pointed this way, so let's get a turn in and surface. Beautiful. And then we'll load up our high explosive shells and go with a 4.7. 
Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fire. Oh man, that button. It's weird how one little thing can just like make your day. That fine tuning adjustment has made my day. And uh, we can see <clears throat> the freighters slowly going under. We got those two definitely going under. And then let's go and check out the York too late. That heavy cruiser has sailed to the bottom of the sea. Uh, let's go back to you and see what do we got to do. Uh, get your high explosive shells loaded and we got an 8.8. .8. Uh, 8.8. .8. Fire. Bam. We could bring that down just, just a scooch. move nice to be able to catch up to those guys we got a 14 whoa 14 right fire ah uh, so close so so very close um i don't think disengaging makes much sense right now so let's just keep moving we got one torpedo reloaded if we are at all interested um, and I don't think at the moment we are. Oh, boo. Uh, let's see. There is one way down there, so that's really what that guy should be doing. I'll see if I remember to do that. Uh, we will just shift ourselves a little bit, like so, and now pick up you. Uh, 14.7. Uh, 14 Guy seems to be a ways out. Five, six, seven. I love that. Oh, that makes me so happy. And we can keep hunting these guys down with ease. 13.7. Like that. Just like that. Boom. Uh, so yeah, you, actually, what I want you to do is to turn this way and to focus in on this guy, who I think is taking damage from both ends, but that's okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we're not going to disengage. We are not disengaging anytime soon. 11.9. Yeah, I mean, the buttons are great for fine adjustment, but certainly use the wheel for um, more drastic changes. Let's see if you like tapping away on a button. Like a crack addict for a while. <laughs> I don't know why you're a crack addict, but uh, take that, society. I say you are. We'll get this guy focusing on the one in behind. Whoops, 18.7. Fire. Oh, a little too, a little too aggressive on the up aim. Yeah, let's play a game of chicken. That's going to end exceptionally well. Uh, 7.6. Oh, there we go. Fire. Uh, and let's see. You are going to be more interested in actually on U 12.3 12.3 fire bam right in the smokestack which I mean that's a cool shot but probably is not going to be doing all that much in the way of damage mm. Do we want to fire a torpedo spread? I don't think so. I think just chasing these guys down is going to be the best bet. 17.2. Uh, 17.2. Uh, keep. Yeah. Keep moving. Because um, we don't necessarily want 6.4. 
we don't necessarily want to play a game of chicken with a freighter. That it, it's dangerous that way, you know. Um, what do we got? Ten. Ten fire. Well, at least that's on the water line. So we should be doing some sort of damage. And um, so with this game, this is the type of mission where it just kind of trudges along at the end. Um, as far as I can tell, if I were to disengage, these freighters that are left wouldn't count as a kill. Um, and since the entire purpose of the game is uh, much like any World War II naval simulation of the war on the Atlantic. <clears throat> Britain is here to defend the transports. Germany is here to sink the transports. Like this is this is the whole reason um, or this is you know this is this is what the main objective is is freighters and transports, right? So obviously the German and the British player have to focus in on these things the way they want to. Britain damn well better protect these guys. Germany uh, damn well better sink them all. So you don't necessarily really want to, uh, I'm just going to start turning this guy around. Because if we don't, then eventually, you know, we're just going to be winding up in the same position as the U-boat that's chasing these guys from behind. Um, so yeah, it's just these missions, these are the missions that, that just kind of get a bit long in the tooth where... And I mean, granted, I'm doing this with a pack of U-boats. They had no destroyer. This thing was a turkey shoot before it even began. Um, but... 15.9, that seems... Actually right on the button. Uh, keep your turn going. And keep your shooting going. Let's just get you down to 2.6. 2.6. There we go. Fire. Yeah. Eat it. Uh, if we keep moving, I wonder. Oops. We've got enough turns now that this guy is... Uh, uh, I don't know if this will work. 218.2, which is where this torpedo was already set, but I mean, we're so far or we're so close, I don't think the torpedo will arm. And yes, torpedo arming is a thing. Um, so be careful. You don't want to, you know, be useless with your torpedoes. Obviously, nobody wants that. Ah, uh, 6.6. We'll just we'll get one more round out on these guys. I think next turn, once we move that sub up, uh, it should be within a one turn torpedo hit. And that'll allow me, I hope, to demonstrate clearly uh, why sub hunting can be so effing dangerous uh, if you're not careful on your, on your movements. Uh, oh, let's... Not confuse myself. Okay, there we go. Keep the turn going. Uh, and in fact, I mean, if we could... Yeah, I'll see if this will work here. So, we want a torpedo at 210.7. So, that'll be just... Yeah, you're telling me that this freighter that's three kilometers away from me I have a feeling that experience dictates to me uh, we should be okay we'll leave it a little bit ahead just in case but we should be okay firing a torpedo right at the ship so let's lose it and so you can see obviously torpedoes move a bit uh, when they're launched Distances when you get close that you know you just can't dodge it, and it's you know that not very dramatic 
<clears throat> uh, example there, you know, is kind of kind of what I'm saying with the uh, with the whole torpedo thing, with the whole U-boat thing in general, is just that. Um, yeah, one ninety nine point eight. Let's let's lose that shiz. Uh, is that, and that's what I'm finding against the Royal Navy, when I'm going up against U-boats, I'll get myself into a position where, you know, I gotta spread out the destroyers, because, uh, destroyers are the only thing that can really hunt down U-boats, well, you know, and corvettes, and little ships like that, but, but it's little ships, so, uh, 16, boom, so your um keep that turn going. But now we might as well target this guy. I don't know. 1.7 kilometers, that should be okay. Let's just shift that a little bit so it's slightly different. There we go. Uh lock that in and fire. Um Perfect. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. I think we got everything. Nope, there's still that guy. Okay. Uh, well, let's just turn you a little bit. And let's get that lined up. What are you at? 2.4. So it might not be a bad idea. 23, though. I don't know. I don't know about that, guys. 23 even? My god, the amount of noise coming from all those freighters thinking. See, I'd kinda, I'm kind of of the opinion that we can just, we can end this with just a single torpedo right now. So, let's do that. Fire. Obviously these guys are gonna have to come back for supplies. Whether we're using our high explosive rounds or our torpedo rounds, these guys would have to come back for supplies anyway. So yeah, as I was saying about the destroyers, um, you're in a situation where you're uh, putting them in, in like crazy danger, trying to hunt subs, which is their, their sole job. Um, but losses, man, losses can mount quickly. And uh, with the ability for a submarine, if it hasn't fired or it's been a while since it's fired, to potentially get four torpedoes out um, without you being able to dodge them at all, that's where it gets tricky. And that's, that's the situation. My sub-hunting skills are being put to the test the most with... The British campaign, because it snowballs, right? Like you come across two U-boats that sink four destroyers, let's say. Well, now you got to replace those four destroyers. Well, you replace those four destroyers. Now you've blown through, what, 2,400 renown? No, 24,000 24, renown. So how are you going to replace 24,000 renown? You take a look at this. We sunk a York-class cruiser, and it gave us 10,000 renown. So... And obviously, sinking the merchants, the, those don't add to your renown. That adds to your merchant tons. And I'll show you guys the, the little the little tracker of that. But, I mean, that's not bad. That's not bad for our first go-round. Uh, Western approaches. We had a submarine attacked by enemy aircraft. So let's take a look. Um, here is the bar that represents the Allied uh, merchant fleets. We already took we already took a bar down off of that. We got where was it? Western approaches. We got a lightly damaged submarine, so let's get you in there. We'll slide back one from there, and then we'll slide one from there. And I think that's looking pretty good. So we'll go next turn. And now what do we got? A cruiser, a destroyer, a large freighter, and a large freighter. Okay, this episode's going to be a bit long, because there's no... Like I said, there's no auto-resolve. There's no way to... Um, finish this up quickly if I wanted to escape out of this battle I will show you guys scuttle all ships so it'll scuttle everything you've got that's it there is no auto resolve so um, when you start a battle strap in it's something I should have been thinking of 
but I wasn't. I wanted to um, get my U-boats moved quickly enough uh, before the end of the episode. But now, you know what? We're doing another combat. That's fine. Let's take a look at the layup or the layout. We've got the Aphrodite, we've got the Achilles, and a large freighter, and a, and a C2 freighter down there. We've got one U-boat in here. We've got uh, another one that's in relatively close uh, proximity. I think we'll use this guy to hit the two freighters, and we'll use U-110 to go after um, the Achilles and the Aphrodite, Aphrodite, whatever it is. Uh, we'll just get a little bit of a port turn. Right, and then move those guys. So now we're pointed in relatively the right direction. Let's load up our torpedoes. And um, let's get these suckers set up. 352.1. So we'll get ourselves in. Lining it up. 352. 352. Point one. Close enough. Um... They're far enough away that I, we're not hitting them this turn. But, you know what? We'll line it up just in case. And then you are 339. So, not too far off of where you're at currently. What is it, 339 even? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, here should be close to that. 339.1, that's fine with me. We'll let those two torpedoes uh, go on their way. And they should be stopping pretty soon. There we go. Okay, so are you the one? You're the one that's further up here. You're the one that's going to be going after the two warships. Gotcha. Full turned port. There we go. So now we can get a good lineup on the destroyer at a 1.2. We'll just get that adjusted. 1.8, far too much. 1.2. Uh, there we go. Log it in, and fire. We'll pick up the cruiser um, when we've got a chance to. And let's see. Actually, we may pick up the cruiser uh, right now. We got torpedoes on every other ship. So getting a spread on this guy is probably not a bad idea. 21.3, you say. Twenty-one point three, twenty-one point five. That should be good, and we'll just get a nice little spread going on here. We don't necessarily want it too wide. Uh, two torpedoes. Two torpedoes should be enough to sink this guy. I like this. All torpedoes coming in. We'll hopefully commit at the same time, although I doubt that that's going to hit right away. Um, so they know we're here. Surprise! Uh, let's see. So we'll just move you along. For the moment, there's no reason for you to do anything. At the moment, there's no reason for any of these ships to do anything. Now, let's, that looks like that torpedo may have missed. Um, so what I will do is wait just a little bit, unless that's going for that one. No, that one's going for that one. Um, we'll wait just a little bit, because we want, we want to make sure that we're going to kill things, uh, if we take a shot at them. We will adjust you, though, because it looks like we get in here. No matter what this cruiser does, those two torpedoes are hitting. There's no way for the Achilles to, uh to dodge those really it's it's a done deal Achilles oh maybe not the Achilles is much quicker than I thought it was so here we got the uh, the Royal Navy coming in on a bombing run let's see pretty accurate I think we got pretty lucky there that none of those depth charges actually did any damage. Uh, we are not having much luck. This is this has been a botched raid, basically. Which is fine. Uh, I didn't want it to happen anyway. So, 
There we go. Uh, it looks like the torpedo that missed the destroyer might actually hit this guy, uh, provided it makes the distance. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it will. Um, we'll get you moving. And then we might as well get another shot on this guy done. 355.3. 355.3. Is that? It is very much within range. Uh, yes. I hope this doesn't travel all the way. Really, what I need to do is learn the distance of how far these things travel on their own. Whew! Just under three kilometers is the answer to that question. Let's get you moving. You should still have... So what we could do here, right, obviously um, the destroyer is going to be able to, you know, move around and uh, protect itself. What we really need is a spread of torpedoes. The question is, um, you know, how wide of a spread do you want? Because, you know, you still want to be relatively close, and we'll do two. Leaving that torpedo one, or leaving that submarine one torpedo, just in case it needs to defend itself. You know what I mean? You want it <clears throat> a relatively decent spread, but you don't necessarily... Uh... How is the York looking? She's sitting a bit heavy in the back, but she's still moving. The, the props are still spinning. I think we'll just move her for now. Ah! So there's there's the destroyer shooting their guns at us. Pretty rude of you, Mr. Destroyer. Uh, that hit that guy back there. It looks like we also got a hit on the destroyer as well. Which I would like to check up on. They're not... They're not tough ships, mind you, but um, they can, they have been known to take a, a torpedo hit or two uh, before going under. Let's get a port turn going, probably pretty aggressive. Uh, we've got one confirmed transport down. We've got no torpedoes for you to fire, right? You've got two. Hmm. All right, let's get one of you going. What do we got? 359.4? Just ever so slightly back. Uh, okay, close enough. Fire. A tenth of a degree shouldn't make that much of a difference, right? Well, we'll see. Um... York is basically, or the, the cruiser over there is basically getting out of dodge as quick as it can. I don't know if I like that. Um, I'm fairly confident in that destroyer going down. Let's see. How far away? Yeah, I think what would be better if we used U-110 to go after Achilles. And then... Would it, though? We got a pretty good shot right here, right now. If we adjust ourselves just a little bit. Uh, that torpedo reloaded, so now we got two. Good! Let's get an 11.2 shot up here. 11.2! That is... Uh, quite the lead. Alright, we'll, we'll do it. I don't know. I have a feeling that destroyer is going to be able to dodge out of the way. That's just me, but that's that's what I'm thinking. Mm, excuse me. I'm taking a this is quite literally a chug of coffee, and if my microphone picked up on that, I do apologize. Uh, let's do a starboard turn, and send this guy basically just after that. 
ship down over yonder. Uh, if we check our torpedoes, you are within range, and we got three of you. So let's see why we don't do this. 13.9. 13.9, 13.9, 13.9? Really? Uh, oh. 14.1, so close. 13.5, just nudged. 13.2, oh my god, we're going the wrong direction. Like, just, again, the keyboard controls for elevation, changing in elevation, perfect. Uh, let me just check to make sure, oh, I, I options? Uh, controls. Let me see if we've got, no, I don't want, zoom in, zoom out, pan map, left click and drag, WASD keys. Hmm, can I? Uh, I guess just apply changes. No, it's not, that's not at all. It's just panning the camera around. I want to, uh, if there's a way to fine tune these damn torpedoes, that would be lovely to know. Um, and now where did my firing solution go? Okay, well that's there. Uh, let's, oh God, going into the menu may have completely removed that line completely. Let's see if those two torpedoes can find can find something to make their day slightly more explosive. <laughs> mm. Those high explosive shells are getting mighty close, and actually, I should take a look at a destroyer there because it looks like we may be visibly showing some damage. The destroyer is dead. The freighter is dead. We're down to one ship, and it's a cruiser. So it should be relatively easy for us. Um, are you the one? Yeah, so if we take a look, this ship here has definitely taken a little bit of damage. Uh, I blame destroyers, high explosive guns, shooting into the water. Uh, you're fine, so we'll just do you done for now. Uh, we can get a good solid port turn on. And you're fine, too. Next turn, you're going to be in a great position. Uh, you can... Is, do we need to be that aggressive with it? Probably not. That's probably fine. And um, no shooty-shooty torpedoes just yet. We definitely want to get in a lot closer than we were. Looks like the captain of this cruiser knows full well... <coughs> Uh, how to avoid torpedoes. Good for him. Uh, could have probably been a bit more aggressive there. I'd like a spread. I don't want to necessarily fire two shots off and call it a day. You move yourself like so, and you have one torpedo. I would like that also to be more than one. Uh, keep moving. done. We'll see. Like, he's just got the aggressive, uh, the, ag the aggressive dip and dodge and duck and dive and evasive maneuver fun. Um, but now, now we're broadside on, uh, 351, 351, 351, are you kidding me? It seems we're going to hold off then, and we're going to get closer. I think that makes more sense. Uh, same with this guy. We're going to just... What do we got? Two? We'll hold off one more turn. See if we can get just a little bit closer. Uh, and honestly, this guy here, we can just disengage him. Let's see. Check our map. So we're basically coming in the same direction. If we both lose two torpedoes each, I think that should be pretty good. So, let's do that. 349. 349. 
That is 349.1. Wow. Okay. So you're suggesting that. And I'm going to say we're going to want a torpedo nicely behind it, too. There we go. Fire. We'll see which of those two have any. Uh, strike home. Okay, so we are basically lined up nicely on that guy. We got two torpedoes. We got 357. 355. 357.9, just a little bit too far. 357.3, .3, close enough for me. And uh, we can slide another one in, kind of like that. There we go, fire. And then if this doesn't sink it, we might just disengage, because it's going to be damaged anyway. It's taking two torpedo hits. It's kind of like, we're at the stage right now, you know, where these these cruisers have, well, they're light cruisers, right? So they're going to be, well, maybe this isn't a light cruiser. Hmm. No, I think the Achilles is a light cruiser. Hmm. <laughs> Let's maybe not surface. Oh! Well, two of those torpedoes are missing. One of them's hitting. Yay! It's a kill! It's like on that Achilles. Alright, done deal. So the U109 has taken a light little bit of damage. We can see we sunk everything else. And uh, we got ourselves some more renown. Not that it really matters, as Germany in this case. Um, renown is something that you're going to have a lot of. I mean, if we take a look at the shipyard anyway, I'm sitting at 223,000 renown. And I mean, we haven't won that much. Um, but there's nothing to spend it on because uh, our fleet's maxed out. This is the joy of the U-boat fleet. Um, so let's go ahead. We've got this repair and rearm. So we can see here the status is for this is going to be two turns. Um, can we take a look at that? No, this just shows all of them. So U-125, not on the list. But what you're going to want to do is obviously if things are damaged, repair them. Or when you run out of munitions, and like I say... Um, it does keep track of everything, right? So, like, if we investigate this, we've got the shell tracker and the torpedoes, so you do expend those uh, as you do things. If we go and take a look at some place where I know we've had uh, enemy, enemy action, we can see this thing's already used a few of its torpedoes. It's got light damage, but no subsystem damage, so it's just chilling, doing its best uh, to, to, to live life. Can we not move you? Yeah, there we go. And move you. And then I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk clicking next turn because who knows what could happen. But anyway, this has been episode one of Donuts' Wet Dream. Uh, the Atlantic Fleet German campaign. Like I say, the British campaign will be coming. And when it comes down to it, I much prefer British surf surface ships. I just... I need to learn how to use them properly, especially in sub hunting, which I'm hoping with this campaign, I'll show you guys, can be incredibly powerful. Um, I should have shown it off before, but when I got into my other game, which is about a year from where we are now, so it was about, you know, the end of 1940, I had lost six submarines to the Royal Navy's, like, 50 some odd surface ships we already had over half of the required tonnage sunk and that for the record was before i understood what this map mode was talking about and i had submarines just scattered everywhere just shotgun blast so i'm hoping this is going to be far more direct and um good because we got all the shipping lanes covered I'm feeling good about this. 
Uh, but yeah, let's, let's, let's leave it off there. It auto saves, so you don't gotta worry about nothing. Uh, when it comes to saving. Anyway, this video has gone on way too long. This was not my intention at all. I was hoping to showcase a battle, maybe. I got rambly, um, <clears throat> and there's no way to save uh, in a battle. So once you start a battle, um, I mean, it's turn-based, so if you need to go do something, feel free to go do something uh, while you're waiting for your turn to go through. But, you know, with, without, a, without an auto-resolve, and... It's really just on the tedious ones, right? Like, if I've got a situation where I've got six U-boats, I've had this in, in the other campaign, I had six U-boats against a single destroyer and, like, nine freighters. And because of the placement, I was able to sink the destroyer before it could even move. So then, because you don't want to just, like, back out of that game and not have any of those freighters count as being sunk, you gotta go ahead and do it manually. It just takes a while. You know, it can, it can get... It's like, in Total War... If you had no auto-resolving battles, um, you know, once you get yourself, once you get your military established and you start working the map properly, you're not really ever going to get into a situation, or you rarely get into a situation, where you're fighting a fight that um, actually requires you to intervene. You know, it's like three or four enemy units against your stack with a 78-star general leading the charge. Um... You know, you don't necessarily want to fight through the battles with with the peasants, having having your your knights and whatever storm them down. It's the same thing in this. I don't necessarily want to go through and sink eight freighters with with a bunch of U boats. Something like something in there that would be nice to have like an auto resolve. But other than that, I realize I kind of I kind of talk about all the things I wish this game had. Um, it's a really good game, and, you know, two weeks later, I'm still playing it. It's, it's a very, <clears throat> I hate to use the word simple, but it's, it's, it's a very simple game that underneath it, well, it looks simple, and then underneath it, there's, um, layers of strategy that you just, you weren't really expecting from a mobile port game, and that's what, like, <laughs> That's what keeps blowing my mind about this thing is that originally it's an iOS game, right? Like this is this is a mobile game touchscreen thing. Um, if this is if this is the direction mobile games have gone the past couple years, I might have to you know start mobile gaming, which is weird. I haven't mobile games since uh, the Game Boy, like the original green screen Game Boy. Man, that thing was great. Um, anyway. That's enough of me rambling. You guys can expect to see more of these coming in the future, of course. And eventually, I'll probably finish off Donuts' as Wet Dream before I go in with the Royal Navy. But I will be uh, working my butt off to come up with some good uh, sub-hunting strategies for the Royal Navy so I can get that going as well. Um, yeah, man, this episode went long. Sorry about that, guys. But hey... If you liked the long episode, or just the episode in general, thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.